Welcome, everyone. Anthos, welcome. It's great to uh, get to see you, uh, even in uh, if we're not quite in the same location. Um, uh, tell us a little, let's just jump right in. Time's limited. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the, the Zumper uh, story. Give us the elevator pitch. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Eric. Um, so Zumper is now the largest privately held apartment rental platform in the US. Will be used by about 80 million uh, people this year. So about one in three Americans, uh, adult Americans. And the mission of our company is to make renting an apartment as easy as booking a hotel. And so whereas um, Zumper began as a, a search engine, a search portal for apartments, a bit like a Zillow for rentals, um, we're much more interested in building a, a booking engine where renters can actually transact on the apartments they find. So um, we began as a lead gen company and we're now an end-to-end -end marketplace. And um, that's really where we're focused. Mm -hmm. How long were you doing in the first stage, basically working uh, working as a lead gen uh, for other uh, for, uh, landlords? Yeah, um, we, we spent five years getting to our current scale, which is you know, 14, 15 million visits a month, maybe seven, eight million MAUs a month. That took five years and similar to the WAG conversation before, um, this stuff takes a long time and building marketplace liquidity, especially in an industry like residential rentals where we need to show renters every single apartment to be relevant because they're gonna spend a third of their income on this decision. Uh, it took five years and almost a hundred million dollars in venture to get to like the end of stage one before we can then deliver the e-commerce platform. So. Uh, five years until we could even get dangerous on actually transactions. So it's, it, it takes a long time. So let's talk about um, that, that second phase and kind of the problem that you're trying to solve. Because uh, the first part, the aggregation part, is a big enough problem on its own, but other people have done it and you've done it uh, quite effectively. But the second problem feels a little trickier um, to to take the transaction online and talk us through uh, through the, the the problem set. Yeah, and that it came like many founders on this kind of conference. It came from just personal problems I'd had in my twenties when I'd moved and like couldn't actually get the apartments I wanted. I could find them online, but when it came to the point of transaction, all these transactions were happening behind the scenes in brokers' offices, property managers' offices, and it felt like for the biggest transaction of my life. I should have more transparency and I should be able to, to know what I can get. And then if you think about the landlord side, landlords also want to close transactions quickly. They don't want to be writing up applications on paper and faxing it to credit bureaus. And so we thought, well, if you can bring these two sides together into an e-commerce play, I think there's benefits for both. And so um, what Airbnb very successfully did on short term rentals, what you see kind of like Compass or Open Door trying to do on the for sale side, that's where we're focused. Um, so it involves renters leaving deposits, applying online, paying their rent to their landlords online. And then for, for landlords, it involves all of the kind of converse of those actions, which is how do you collect applications? How do you decide who the right applicant is? How do you receive rent payment? How do you store your lease? And so everything we build for one side of the marketplace has a completely different product team building it for the other side of the marketplace. And so for every one product we build, we build two. So there's really uh, there, there's almost two parts to this business in, in a sense, right? One is a is that initial transaction where I'm looking for apartment or and I sign a lease and now I'm uh, I'm a tenant. And then there's this second element which makes this a little bit different, which is playing a role in the ongoing transaction, the ongoing relationship between the uh, the renter and the landlord. And talk a little bit about how that plays into your uh, into your model. That element. Yeah, I mean, um, as many of the listeners know, um, I think 70% of US rental checks are still actually on a physical check. Uh, they're being mailed to their landlord or dropped off in the landlord's mailbox. That's insane, not just from an efficiency point of view, but from a trust and safety point of view. And so as Zumper tries to build the most trusted apartment rental platform in the US, part of that is creating the rails of these monthly payments between landlords and renters and creating a trust that landlords expect to receive their payment on the same day every month and renters know that when they submit their payment it will go on time they will not have any issues with uh, the transmission or any threats that the rent didn't come on time or they couldn't vouch for it and so um first of all it was to solve a problem second of all if you think about it from a you know venture-backed startup perspective where now zump has raised 140 million and obviously our investors want us to take this far there are huge strategic advantages to being in that payment flow so um, we're processing, you know, a third of the renter's income uh, every month 
to their landlords. If you think about the services we might be able to offer them, whether it's renter's insurance, setting up an Instacart account, uh, HBO Max account, there are so many other things we can do where I think Zumpa starts as a rental brand but moves more into a lifestyle company where we help renters actually enjoy the space they moved into. I think that's where we um, where we end. And so talk a little bit about your business model. How are you making money? So very simple. Zumper makes money two ways. Um, our classic landlords who for the first five years paid us for lead gen uh, can continue to pay us to come to the top of the results. So this is just like any classic kind of lead gen business where people uh, jockey for position in front of our kind of 15 million visits a month. The transaction model says, um, OK, you can pay us for lead gen but we can do far more for you. So instead of paying us for eric.savitz at you know, gmail.com, I'm not trying to give your email address away. That was a, that was a guess, Eric. Um, instead of paying us for a random Gmail address, pay us for Eric Savitz with this credit, this criminal, this eviction report. He's pre-qualified and he can actually pay you a six-week deposit to lock the apartment down online. Um, that's what we're building. So we try and encourage landlords to see the value on paying us per transaction instead of just paying us to kind of fill their CRM with a bunch of Gmail addresses. So talk about um, a little bit about who your customer set is, right? So there are small landlords with one or two properties. There are landlords who own hundreds or thousands of apartments. Who are you trying to serve um, primarily? Yeah, and like every marketplace business in this conference, like our supply side is segmented. There are loads of different parts of supply. It's never as simple as just saying kind of landlords. Uh, to oversimplify, there are kind of two kinds of landlords we serve. There's the, the multifamily landlords who, for those of you in the US, is like the Avalon Bays of the world with the kind of big tower blocks. They yeah. constitute about 20 to 25% of rental inventory in the US. They're typically people who pass for leads. Like they've got sophisticated systems and leasing teams in their basements. So they pay us for access to our consumers because they don't have 80 million Americans using avalonbay.com. Uh, the other 75% of the market, which is kind of the mid market and the long tail landlords, they're who pay us for the transaction because they don't have access to leasing agents or sophisticated CRMs or sophisticated kind of rent collection tools. They're the kind of the grand underserved um, community. And so the way Zump is working is um, much like kind of hotel marketplaces. We're building for the small landlords now. And once we get the tools we build for the small landlords to enterprise grade, then we move them upstream and say to the Avalons and the big landlords of the world, hey, you're used to paying us for leads, but we can do so much more for you. And I think many marketplaces are built like that, where you try the much more disruptive software on your smaller customers who need it the most. You, you get it to a level of enterprise grade that makes you feel pretty comfortable. And then you upsell it to the big guys. And that's ultimately where most of the dollars are. Um, Booking.com did it this way. Expedia did it this way. Everyone starts small, then builds to enterprise grade. Um, we kind of stumbled into it. It wasn't a conscious choice, but it makes sense. How much of the, uh, well, two couple of related questions. One is how much of the, say, you know, U.S. apartment inventory that's available do you have on the platform? And then, um, and then sort of secondly, where are you doing most of your business? So is it mostly... Yep large cities. Give me a sense of what that looks like. Yeah. So um, we show about a million listings a month on Zumper. And we believe there are about 1.2 million rental apartments for rent every month in the US. So we have about five sixths of the apartment inventory. Um, our platform didn't tip till we got to about 80%. So when we used to have, when we launched back in like 2013, you know, we'd have like 50% of New York's inventory or San Francisco's inventory. Our market didn't take off at all. There was no um, network effect or supply and demand begetting each other until we got to about 80% of supply. And it was interesting listening to the WAG um, founder before this speaking about which side of the marketplace was more important to WAG in dog walking. And he said, actually, demand was more important. It's funny, in apartment rentals for Zumper, uh, demand's actually irrelevant. Uh, it comes if you get the supply. But because, Eric, to your question, supply is such a high threshold you can't just have 50 percent of apartments like you might be able to have 50 percent of dog walkers you have to have every apartment or at least four fifths of the apartments because you're going to spend so much money on this transaction it takes a long time to get to platform liquidity um the the one sixth of us inventory we don't have the good news is zillow doesn't have it either and apartments.com doesn't have it either it's the the kind of the walmart thumbtack kind of postings up in Lansing, Michigan, 
where mm. they're still occurring and uh, that and it's great and we want them to come online. So um, we have most of the inventory, but it took a very long time to get there. And for us, uh, supply matters far more than demands. Demands will always come if you have the supply. And then Eric, I forgot your second uh, part of the question. Um, oh. Where is Zumper oh. most popular? Yeah. So well. So 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 the second part is where are you actually doing the most transactions? And and then a kind of a related question really is. So you have most of the inventory. Zillow has most of the inventory, and Apartments.com is assuming that's most of the inventory. Um, how do, how on that side of the business then do you um, you know like what what makes what makes someone transact on your site versus someone else's site? Yeah. It, um, we started being strong on like the coast. So like we had like a tech brand to begin with. And so most kind of millennial urban dwellers for the first three or four years used us on the coast. So like we were big in LA and San Francisco, New York, Boston, Chicago. Um, on the second question, um, so that was, that was the early days actually. And then, but there's only so many tech crunch articles you can do to make you kind of your brand scale. That's tech crunch is not the mainstream. And so obviously now, to become next level, we have to be big in Texas and the Midwest and like these states that like uh, obviously have far more of the population in them. And that's where Zump is becoming popular now. Yeah. Your second question is like the the biggest question that I go to bed with every night, which is we're going up against Zillow, a $10 billion company and CoStar, who own apartments.com, a $20 billion public company. And we're the number three player in the space and we're the largest private player. But it's not enough just to compete with them on on search and lead gen. I think being the number three player in that space is good. That's where the transaction platform comes in. So um, we already make the majority of our revenue from transactions, not from lead gen, uh, mm -hmm. as this e-commerce play. And that's not true of Zillow and CoStar. They're, they're much more lead gen plays. And so instead of beating them at their own game, where these companies are amazing lead gen platforms, for us, building a search engine was a means to an end but actually the uh, way to disrupt the big guys and the way to build the next generation of marketplace is to become transactional while they kind of remain predominantly lead gen companies, at least in rentals. So let's talk for a moment about um, the experience that you have had uh, during the uh, pandemic, uh, during the shutdown. This is a, uh, obviously a difficult time for people to get out and look at apartments. Um, or to do other kinds of transactions. How has that impacted your business? What's happened in terms of pricing? And then, you know, my a related question is, it seems clear that a lot more people are going to work from home, not just for the next few months, but maybe on an extended basis, which raises some interesting questions about the dynamics of the markets uh, where, um, uh, where this is true, particularly large markets like New York and San Francisco. Talk a little bit about what you've seen and what you might anticipate happening in the months ahead. Yeah, so residential rentals, and we know we are classic 12-month leases, um, they took a 40% hit in March. So the week after many U.S. states moved to shelter in place, uh, U.S. kind of Google organic traffic was down 40% year on year in terms of just generic apartment queries. So Zumper was flat because we're kind of stealing share, but it was still like, you know, we expected to be 40% up year on year and suddenly we were flat. So people postponed moves. Uh, absolutely. It was pretty devastating to our industry. Um, what we're seeing now is kind of a couple of things. One is um, pent up demand is now being released. People still need to move and, and some people are still moving into aspirationally the next up apartment. Sadly, given the unemployment rate in the US, many people are gonna have to trade down uh, to find apartments to fit their new needs because of uh, the crazy things going on in our economy. Uh, so demand is kind of back. I think the um, the question is now, how do they transact? So the downside for Zumper during this was in the last three months, our traffic like fell off a cliff temporarily. But then like any good entrepreneur, like you have to find the upside in the, in the, in the tragedy of what's going on. So we launched a product called InstaRent. InstaRent is true e-commerce for apartments where you can reserve an apartment online, uh, pay a small fee, and actually that's your apartment. And you have 24 hours to close it, whether you could go tour in person or you can just rely on our VR and video tour. And so, Eric, I think with demand coming back, a significant, a significantly higher percentage of renters are prepared to take an apartment unseen or to commit to it online before they actually then go and see it. And pre-COVID, only 10% of renters would be prepared to take an apartment online. During COVID, 
80% of our renters are prepared to leave a deposit and actually transact on an apartment online. 80%. Now, 80% are, so let me just, let's just underline that, right? Yeah. 80% of people are willing to rent apartments that they never step foot in. Correct. Post COVID, the question, Eric, is going to be, it's not going to be 80%. So like we get it and we encourage our renters to go and see apartments still, but it's not going to be 10%. If you're, you know, in New York and you're moving to LA, this is a wonderful way to actually like close an apartment lease. And our job as Zumper is to give you enough information and enough video and VR tours to make you comfortable that this is a decision you're prepared to make. For the say 25% of people after COVID are prepared to do it. Three quarters of the world will still want to go see the open house. That's great. Zumpa's tools will still work when you're in the open house. You can use InstaRent to book it, um, but it's going to fundamentally shift people's like risk propensity that actually make larger commitments online, and it's probably sped up the industry by ten years. Wow, that's very interesting. Do, do you um, could you talk a little bit about we we talked about this in preparing for the session about what's uh, what you're seeing in terms of rents, uh, particularly in the in large markets in New York and the Bay Area. Yeah, so many of you have probably read a lot of the kind of online stuff about our company's going to go remote. Like, are we all going to work from home? Um, what does that look like? How does it affect millennial demos in like San Francisco, LA, New York, Chicago? Like, what happens to rent prices if we don't need to live in these cities anymore? And it's real. So that Twitter conversation you guys have probably followed uh, in the last week, we see it in our data. So to give you a couple of examples, San Francisco's rents are down 7% year on year. In seven years of running this company, we've never seen a decline. Mountain View and Menlo, obviously near the Google campus, the Facebook campus, their one bed apartment rents are down 15% year on year. So when you guys hear that like companies going remotely will have a massive impact on the real estate market in, in areas where traditionally people try to live near work, uh, that is real. And it is not just idle chit chat on Twitter. We're going to release data next week where San Francisco is now almost double digits down year on year in terms of rent prices. So for those of you who are staying in kind of hot millennial metros, your rent should get cheaper. Um, for those of you who are landlords or especially commercial landlords, the, the downward pressure on rents is, is real. Um, many people think it's overdue. But this this kind of move to remote that a fraction but a significant proportion of companies are going to do is going to have seismic shifts on the real estate market. So uh, we're going to take it. We have just a couple of minutes. We've got a couple of questions from uh, from the audience. And if anybody else has any and wants to drop them into the chat, um, please uh, do. Um, someone was asking uh, how you qualify a good lead versus a bad lead like on your lead gen platform. Maybe if you can talk a little bit about your lead gen process. Yeah. So um, we use um, we can use elements of machine learning to qualify good and bad leads. So user behavior, uh, using machine learning to kind of cohort behaviors into like leads that do tend to close apartments and leads that tend to be more like, hey, I'm just asking, but I'm not really in market. So machine learning um, at our scale is helpful because we have so much data to try and bucket users into certain behaviors. The harder way to do it is to actually pull API calls. So uh, renters who are actually transacting with us allow us to run their credit criminal and eviction uh, by us asking four security questions and taking the last four of their social. That gives us like hundreds of thousands of data points on them that we're able to pass off to the landlords. So at a high level, machine learning helps us kind of uh, qualify users in their behavior. But once mm -hmm. they come through our funnel, we have to rely on API cores to actually hard qualify them. Interesting. So how much, what, what's the like, uh, how often do you, what's the percentage of, of uh, success rate, like the hit rate of somebody who comes, looks for an apartment that actually then closes? Like yeah, what? it's like three to 5%. So of like every hundred messages sent on our platform, it, or, or another way of saying this is, uh, if, yeah, if a hundred messages are sent on the platform, it will turn into somewhere between three to five leases. So the average renter sends around 20 to 30 messages in their search which is high. So they kind of, uh, they do like to see a lot, but again, it's such an important decision that our job at Zumper is not just to show them one apartment and say, hey, take this. We're actually comfortable with them uh, sending multiple messages because it's like a, it, you, you know, it's it's the heart of your life where you live. So um, three to 5% uh, close into leases. And, and do you think that the rest of them, is it that people are using other services? Is it that they're 
they're kind of just shopping around. They're thinking maybe three months from now I should look. I, I looked today, I was thinking like, oh, like I'm, not that I'm, I'm actually not looking for an apartment, but I was curious about in, in the Palo Alto market. So yeah, I mean, um, our renters typically, um, they'll probably use us and like Zillow or us and apartments.com together. The, the time where Zumpa uh, is exclusive is where they book with Zumpa. So when you use InstaRent and you reserve an apartment, you can only do that on Zumpa. So that's where they have to exclusively use us. Most of the reason why um, most of our MAUs don't close in that month is just that most renters look for six months. So a lot of behavior we see now where our users are kind of back, a lot of those users are like college uh, seniors or uh, second year grad students who are looking for August and they're doing their research now. So um, our job is to kind of keep that user and that MAU for the next three months and then close them in August when they're actually consummating the move. And then um, I, I know we're running out of time, so let me just uh, uh, one other last thing. Uh, do, are you seeing more activity of people who are, say, looking from out of market? So if if you if you are looking to relocate, um, that might be a, that's an easy way to check, right? Like, we normally you might think, oh, how am I supposed to work for an apartment? I'm living in New York and I'm moving to San Francisco, um, or vice versa. Totally. Are you seeing more? That kind of activity yeah on two levels one is and uh, we now have the tools to allow you to do that so but with just photos i don't think it's good enough but now we can offer renters video and vr they can actually like get much more informed and two is i mean we're in the midst of like a gigantic global recession and mobility is going to be really interesting like some people are going to move back to their home state um some people are going to quit these kind of hot millennial metros and they're going to move to more affordable places and so we're seeing a huge uh demand of moving out of like these coastal states into like more right. livable places and um so for both those reasons uh yes um there's a lot of um uh kind of up earthing that's going to happen in the next six months well, interesting. Well, this has been a great conversation. It's gone very fast. Um, I hope uh, I hope people enjoyed, and thank you for uh, for the time. And I think we're we're ready to wrap up. Thanks, Eric. And anyone who has any questions, it's just my first name at zumper.com or at Anthemos on Twitter. Send me a note. And Eric, uh, great stuff. Enjoyed talking. Thanks very much. Thanks so much. Have a great day.